Hello, this is David from DN Cognitive Counseling. Tonight, we're going to talk about step three. For those of you who do not see the first two videos, you might want to, steps one and two. Step three is actually the most controversial of steps. It led to the Supreme Court of the United States making a very foolish and uninformed decision. The step says, we made a decision to turn our will over to the care of God as we understood Him. Sounds simple. So what did the Supreme Court have such a huge problem with? It's the big G word, God. In their infinite foolishness, the belief was that AA was preaching religion because it mentioned God. Now, I could make the argument in God We Trust, which is on every dollar bill. So by that standard, the Supreme Court of the United States is saying that every single dollar is a religious ideology. But even getting away from that, the lack of understanding of the step is the problem. AA did never believed in the idea that you needed to believe in God. In fact, there's a chapter in the big book that talks about the agnostic. The agnostic is somebody who doesn't believe or doesn't necessitate the belief in God. Atheists can be an AA. AA is not a religious belief and does not believe in any one or multiple religions or exclusion of religion. So you'll say, then how do you do this step? It says the word God there. Let's talk about the idea of making a decision and what the first words meant. The addict in general feels like he doesn't have choices. His instinct takes over and he goes into an obsessive desire, follows that desire, and is totally out of control. After doing the first two steps, he has now come to believe that a power greater than, than himself can restore him to sanity. But yet, I'm not following anybody else. I'm not going to be following again somebody who's going to tell me what to do. Therefore, the addict is encouraged to make a decision to turn his will over. Now let's go over that for a second before we get to the God word. Okay, He's turning his will over. Why does he have to turn his will over? Because what is the addict's will? I want what I want when I want it. I want it now. I want to give in to my desires. I want to do what I want to do. I have a feeling. I can't take the feeling. I got to get rid of it now. I want to medicate it. I want to get rid of it. I don't feel comfortable with this feeling. So the addict pushes himself to get something that will have an immediate effect, but a long-term consequence. So we make a decision to turn our will over. Now, what should we turn our will over to? Should we just allow ourselves to take anybody and say, you know something, I'm going to turn my will over to you? When Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob came up with the wording of the steps, they were living in a time period where people understood certain language. And what was the relationship between God and man? It was very much understood. God is the... And man is the what? What's the relationship? And if you think about it, God is the creator and man is the creation. And what does the creator want for the creation? Or, to put it another way, what is it that we want that we create? And what do we want for them? Well, what do we create? Well, we create children. And the aspect is, as God being the father figure, what does God want for the child? And from the aspect of the father, father, literally, what does he want for his child? So what the father wants or what God would want is the best for you. He wants you to reach your potential of your greatness. It doesn't matter whether you believe in a God or not. You don't have to. The idea is to understand the concept that it's not about your will. 
It's about putting your will over to something that's going to say that it wants the best for you. So one of the ways I help clients to work on step three is ask themselves one question. And if you ask yourself this one question, it can change your life. And I really want you to think about it. Before what you're about to do, and you're about to do it, would you want your child to do that? If the answer is yes, then it's excellent you could do that. If the answer is no, then you shouldn't be doing it. Do you want your child smoking cigarettes? Do you want your child using cocaine? Do you want your child cheating, lying? Do you want your child running from the police? Do you want your child committing crimes? Do you want your child to uh, cheat on their taxes? So understand that when you're utilizing step three, it helps you to understand what your morality is. Now I use the word morality, why? Because when you get to step four, you have to know what that looks like. So in step three, you're developing your morality, not by saying what you'll do. I've had many clients tell me, no, 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 no. My girl can't cheat, but it's okay for me. Because the rules are different when it comes to me. I can come up with rationalizations and excuses. But when it comes to somebody you care about and you want the best for them, suddenly those things go, go away. I have a lot of clients will tell me I'll spend time in jail, but they don't want it for their son. So we substitute our will, which is we will tolerate going through hell over and over and over again. Yet it's not the same we want for our kids. So we turn our will over to the care of God as we understood him. See, the understanding part or the understood part here has to do with your relationship and understanding to what God wants from you to be your best. And that's why when you work this step, the way you work it might be different than your friend that works it, which might be different than your neighbor that works it. Because each person is going to have their own sense of their morality, what they believe is right and wrong, what their best is, and they're going to come up with different answers. And that's why the Supreme Court of the United States ruined this by stating that AA was a religion with a simple doctrine, with a lack of understanding that the simple aspect of God here was an analogy to help a person understand that their own self will run riot was destructive and hurtful. And by allowing that person to say, you know something, I'm not going to look at things anymore only from my eyes. I'm going to look at it from the standpoint at that point from God who wants the best for me or as I would say it more that people would understand it today that what you want for your child. <clears throat> would you want to do that? Do you want your child to do that? Then do it. Then that's okay. If the answer is no, then you can't be doing it either. And that's substituting that aspect. And in the rooms, there's a beautiful thing about God that they say, if you don't believe in God, not a problem. G-O-D, good, orderly direction. In other words, I made a decision to turn my will over to the care of good, orderly direction as I understood it. And you understand if you understand the letters of that letter to change it that way so that you can understand that you don't have to have a belief in God per se. And you could still work the step absolutely perfectly. There is no necessitation of any religious belief. And I'm deeply sorry that the people that, that went ahead and presented this to the Supreme Court of the United States did not understand this fundamental idea that has been around for a long time. And they got false ideas and misconceptions that they then labeled AA a religion. N-A, S-A, M-A, all the A's. Why? Because of lack of knowledge. And it's a travesty that they did that. Because so many people who used to get mandated par parole officers, so at least would get the understand and flavor of AA and understand what it's like, no longer can do that anymore because it's, you can't mandate somebody to a religion. And that has led to a lot more problems and a lot more relapse. AA is an unbelievably good 
organization with a lot of misconceptions. There's a lot of false beliefs about it. Because what happens is that people equate it with the idea of treatment. It's not treatment. Treatment is different. People go to treatment centers and would still be told, go to meetings. I'm confused. I'm in a treatment center. What do I got to go to meetings for? Because they do different things. And that's why it's so important to understand these steps and how they work. Because it saves lives when people work them correctly. And it leads to travesty and tragedy when people don't. Many times, you have people that come in, and they come in once, twice, three times, four times. And by the fifth or sixth time, they finally get it. Why? What changed? The aspect is they start to understand things a little bit more as they've been through it. It would be nicer if they got it the first time or earlier on. There would have been a lot less, a lot less pain for both them and their families. I hope that this helps you to understand that third step and how it works. And if you, again, you work by that one question, whatever I'm about to do, what I want my child to do it, that is you working your step three. That is you developing your moral compass. And at that point, you get a better sense of what you think right and wrong is. Again, as you understood him. Nobody else is telling you that. In religion, religions dictate to you what its doctrine is. You must do this on this day. We don't eat this then. You do. That's not what AA says. It's your choice. You make the decision. And that's the reason why you could have anybody from any religion, in any people, atheists, all being a part of it and having no issue if they understand the concept. The big problem again is that people have with the serenity prayer again. And I will do a video on that as well to explain in detail why again that's got nothing to do with a deity or believing in God. But a concept that helps people to understand something. And again, in the 1930s when this stuff was written, people understood this much greater than they do today. And a lack of understanding and a lot of misconceptions lead to problems. I hope that you like this video. I hope that if you have any questions or you disagree with anything I said, please comment below. I'll be very happy to respond. And again, if you didn't yet, hit subscribe and uh, share. It's a very important for those people who don't understand these things and have never been addressed in this way. It might be helpful. And the last but not least, if you want, there is a subscribe star linked to be a patron to this channel. And I thank you very much. Have a good night and good mental health.